Hi friends, my name is Krishna, Krishna Akumalla. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we are going to discuss about a new chapter called depreciation. We are going to talk about the concept of depreciation today and later we will discuss about the different methods of depreciation, how to calculate the depreciation. We also uh, going to work on some you know illustrations as well. But today we are going to focus only on concept of depreciation. Right? Without wasting much time, let us get into the topic. Okay. Okay, guys. Let us understand the concept of depreciation. What do you mean by depreciation? Why we need to calculate depreciation? What happens if I don't calculate the depreciation? These are the three important points we do. What are these? What do you mean by depreciation? Why should we calculate depreciation? What happens if I don't calculate the depreciation? Right? So, this is, this is precisely about the concept of depreciation. So, before I get into the concept of depreciation, let me talk about the definition of fixed assets, what we discussed in our previous video. Fixed assets. What do you mean by fixed asset? Any article purchased by the business, not for resale, but for business use, is known as fixed. Any asset purchased by the business, not for reset, but for business use, is known as a fixed asset. So, what does it mean? Suppose if I purchase a machinery, if I purchase a machinery, what do I do with this machinery? I purchase this machinery and produce some products. I produce some products. Correct? So, after producing these products, what do I do? I sell these products. When I sell the products, what will happen? I get the revenue. Do you agree with me? So, what am I doing? I am purchasing a you know, machinery, which is a fixed asset. Why am I purchasing machinery? To produce some product. After producing the products, what am I doing? I am selling those products. When I sell the products, what am I going to get? I am going to get a revenue. Right? So, fixed assets are basically used for earning revenues. Fixed assets are used in the business for earning revenues. So, when I am purchasing an asset for earning revenue, let us say I purchased a machinery for 1 lakh. I purchased a machinery for 1 lakh. This 1 lakh is called what? This 1 lakh is called acquisition cost or purchase cost. This 1 lakh is called acquisition cost or purchase cost. I purchased this machinery for 1 lakh. How long I am going to use this asset? I must be using this asset not less than 10 years. But there are cases where the assets can be used for 5 years, 3 years as well. I am just taking an example here. Let us assume that I purchased this asset for 1 lakh and the useful life of this asset is 10 years. Useful life of this asset is 10 years. What do you mean by useful life of an asset? This 1 lakh asset I can use for 10 years. This 1 lakh asset I can use for 10 years. What purpose? This 1 lakh asset I use in my business for producing the product. For producing the products. So, by using this you know, 1 lakh machinery, I am going to produce products for next to 10 years. That is the useful life of this asset. So, that means what? This 1 lakh is considered as a fixed asset. This 1 lakh is considered as fixed asset and this fixed asset will be used for 10 years. This fixed asset is used for 10 years. So, what does it mean? 10 years, I am going to generate revenue. I am going to generate revenue by using this machinery. That is the meaning of it. 
I am generate. I am going to generate the revenue for next ten years by using this mission. So one side I am generating revenue by using this machinery by spending one lakh. Right? If I want to your uh, no no. If I want to know what should be my profit, what I am supposed to do? Whatever proportionate cost spent on this machinery also should be debited to P and L account. Proportionate cost for the accounting year. What do you mean by proportionate cost for accounting year? Let us say I purchased this asset and I am going to use this asset from 1st January to 31st December every year. Like this for 10 years I am going to use. 1st January to 31st Jan uh, December. 1st January to 31st December is my accounting year. 1st January to 31st December is my accounting year. So I am going to use this machinery for 10 accounting years like this. I am going to use this asset for 10 accounting years like this. So every accounting year I get revenue by pro using this asset. First year I get revenue, second year I get revenue, third year, fourth year, fifth year, till tenth year I get revenue by using this machinery. So when I am using this machinery for generating revenue for each accounting year, the proportionate cost of the asset also to be debited in that accounting year to, uh, to understand the true and fair view of the profit and loss account. To understand the actual profit basically so if i generate 10 uh, uh, you know 50000 revenue in first accounting year the proportionate cost of this 1 lakh also to be debited to pnl account to understand what should be the proportionate machinery cost used to generate this revenue proportionate cost of that asset used for generating this revenue also to be identified how do i do that simple 1 lakh if I take, divided by 10 years if I put, every year, how much I am spending? 10,000 rupees. So, 10,000 rupees proportionate cost of this machinery, 10,000 rupees of proportionate cost of this machinery is being used to generate this 50,000 revenue. I hope you understand. So, I am using this machinery. For generating a revenue, I generated a revenue of 50,000 in first accounting year. What is the proportionate cost of this machinery I use to generate this revenue? That has to be identified. How do I identify the proportionate cost of the machinery? 1 lakh divided by useful life, I said 10 years, 10 if I put 1 lakh, sorry, 10,000. So 10,000 will be the proportionate cost. Don't go with uh, the, this example alone for calculating the proportionate cost. I will tell you what are all the other components also to be taken into account later. But time being, just for your understanding purpose, what I am trying to explain here is, when I am generating 50,000 rupees worth of gen, uh, revenue in one particular accounting year, how am I generating that revenue? By using this asset. What is the proportionate cost of that asset being used to generate this revenue? 10,000. How did I get 10,000? 1 lakh divided by 10 is equal to 10,000. So, I spent 10,000 rupees worth of proportionate fixed asset to generate this 50,000 revenue. The 10,000 proportionate, you know, cost of asset used for generating revenue is called depreciation. The 10,000 proportionate cost of this asset allocated to this accounting year is called depreciation. I hope you understand this. What do, you, what do you mean by depreciation? The depreciation is nothing but the proportionate cost of asset, proportionate cost of an asset allocated to the respective accounting year for generating revenue is called depreciation. Proportionate cost of an asset allocated to the respective accounting year for generating revenue is called depreciation. Hope you are very clear on this part. Now, I proportionately calculated what should be the cost of asset used for gen generating the revenue 
and that proportionate cost I am treating it as a depreciation. Fine. Now, what happens if I don't to calculate this depreciation? I generated revenue of 50,000. If I prepare my PL account, I generated a revenue of 50,000 in, in one particular accounting year, one accounting year. I generated a revenue of 50,000, but I am not debiting the proportionate cost. Then, if I don't debit 10,000, proportionate cost of an asset, proportionate cost of an asset used for generating this revenue, I am not showcasing the real profit. If I don't put this 10,000, what will happen? I am inflating my profit. I am showing excess profit. But this 50,000 revenue is generated by spending 10,000, right? So, I should definitely debit this 10,000 in the prospective accounting year, p and account to, un to calculate the exact profit. Profit or loss. So, now I hope you are very clear why we need to calculate depreciation. If I don't calculate depreciation, what will happen? I will not get to know the actual profit. If I don't show this, I will be showing 50,000 as a profit. How did you get 50,000 profit? Is it real 50,000 is your profit? No. Why? Because you spent already 10,000 rupees proportionate cost of an asset for generating this revenue. That 10,000 you have to reduce and arrive 40,000 is your closing pro you know, profit. But if you don't debit this, what will happen? Your profit will be shown as 50,000. That means you are inflating your profit. That is the reason why debit cost of proportionate allocation of you know the asset to the PL account. This is the only reason why we need to debit. There are other reasons as well. If I don't debit, what will happen? I need to tomorrow after 10 years, what will happen? This asset will become zero. The one lakh asset, whatever I purchased, will become zero. Why? Because the useful life of that asset is 10 years. After 10 years, the asset will become scrap. The asset will become scrap. It, it will not be in a position to produce any products. If it is not in a position to produce products, after 10 years, how do you manage this you know, revenue? How do you get the revenue? How do you produce your product? So to produce the product, again you need to buy an asset. Same machinery you need to buy. So that time, this 10,000 whatever you are debiting to your P&L account on year on year basis for 10 years, that will accumulate to 1 lakh. That will accumulate to 1 lakh. That 1 lakh will be used to again replace that asset. That 1 lakh whatever debited in P&L account will be used for purchasing a new asset after 10 years so that you continue to produce your products by using or replacing with the, the old machinery with new machinery and start producing. So, if you don't debit the P&L account to the extent of the proportionate cost of an asset, what will happen? Your profit will be inflated, number one. The second reason is, important reasons I am talking. The second important reason is, you will not be in a position to keep some amount aside for replacing this old asset after 10 years. So, you have to have the money. So, what you are doing is, every year you are keeping some amount aside so that by end of 10th year, you will be in a position to replace the same asset by spending this 1 lakh. You might ask me a question, Krishna, what is the guarantee that after 10 years, this asset can be used, you know, can be replaced with 1 lakh, that time the cost might have increased due to inflation. Yes, there could be some inflation, the asset may not be coming out for 1 lakh, probably you might spend 1 lakh 20,000 or 1 lakh 50,000, depends on the inflation and other things, right? That 30,000 or 50,000, whatever extra money we are supposed to pay, we pay and we buy it. But it's not that we don't require to pay total 1 lakh 50 or 2 lakhs for replacing a new asset, right? So this will be a definitely useful for us in terms of, you know, replacing the existing asset. So this is also another reason why we need to provide a depreciation. So these are the two important reasons which I wanted to discuss. Later we discuss about other reasons as well. So what you need to understand is depreciation is very, very important. If you don't debit depreciation, what will happen? It will inflate the profit and you will not have money, accumulated money to replace the existing asset. 
So these are the two important reasons which we can understand right now why we need to have a depreciation. The depreciation, the decrease in the value. Depreciation is what? Depreciation is nothing but a decrease in the asset value. Decrease in the asset value. Why decrease in asset value will come? There are different reasons why the asset value can be decreased. One of the important reasons, wear and tear due to its use in business. Purchased a car. After 10 years or 15 years, what will happen? The value of the asset will come down. You might have purchased a car for 10 lakhs. Will you get the same 10 lakhs after 10 years? Or will you get the you know, same 10 lakhs after 5 years, five years, 5 years if you want to sell? No. Why? You started using that asset. There is a wear and tear of you know, that car. So, the asset's value will be reduced because wear and tear. Started using. Since you started using, there will be a wear and tear. Since there is a wear and tear, the value of the asset will come down. That is another one reason. The other reason is a flex time even when it is not being used. For example, you took a lease, you took a lease for 10 years and the 10 years lease amount is 1 lakh. 10 years lease amount is 1 lakh. I am just giving an example. And you did not go ahead and you know, started you know, uh, digging into uh, or using that asset. You did not use that asset. Whether you use that asset or you don't use that asset, after 10 years, the lease period will get over and you have to hand over that asset to the respective owner. What do you call that? This 1 lakh whatever you paid, if you don't make use of that asset for this 10 years, what will happen? This 1 lakh value will become zero. Why? Because the lease period is over. Lease period is for 10 years and you are silent. You did not make use of that asset for 10 years. Then what will happen? This 1 lakh will become zero on 10th year, the end of the 10th year. So that is called a flex of time. Whether you use it or you don't use it, because of a flex of time, what will happen? The asset will become zero. That means the total 1 lakh will be depreciated. That is one another reason why there will be a uh, no decrease in the value of the asset. Another reason, obsolescence due to technological or other changes. What do you mean by obsolescence due to technological or other changes? Suppose I purchased a machinery. After one year, there is a drastic change in technology. And this, this uh, no, asset, whatever I purchase, machinery, whatever I purchase, it has become outdated. But I, pay, I paid 1 lakh for that asset. After one year, what happened? There is a change in technology. Since there is a change in technology, this 1 lakh asset has become useless. I cannot use that asset because there is a change in technology. I need to buy a new asset with a new technology. So, when I am purchasing a new asset with a new technology, the old asset, whatever I purchase it for 1 lakh, I am not going to use. Whether I use it or I don't use it, the value of that asset will come down. Because the useful life of the asset, let us say 10 years, and if I don't use this asset for the next 10 years, the 1 lakh will become 0 after 10th year. Because there is a change in technology. So, those, those changes also will be considered as you know, depreciation. Because those changes have come and the asset is not in use. Because the asset is not used in, uh, uh, not used in, so what will happen? The value of the asset will come down and obviously that will be treated as the depreciation. Next, decrease in the market value. There are some cases where I have purchased an asset for 1 lakh, market value has become maybe 30,000 or 40,000. There is a sudden decrease in the market value. So, since there is a drastic change in the market value, the differential price between what is acquired by me, what is the acquisition cost and market value, the difference price will be treated as depreciation for me. Because there is a decrease in market value. Next, depletion mainly in case of mines and other natural resources. Suppose if I took a mine for 10 years, then what will happen? I need to start digging into the mines, right? 
So as and when I start digging into it and I start using the mines, the value of the asset will be keep reducing. So these are all the reasons why the asset value can be decreases. The asset value can be decreases. Right? So what we understood? We understood what is the concept of depreciation and why should we debit depreciation? If I don't debit depreciation, what happens? My profit will get inflated. I will not get accumulated funds for replacing existing asset. All these reasons why what happens if I don't debit depreciation. So we also understood what is the concept of depreciation. I hope you understand the concept. If you are, you know, uh, if you understood the concept, please like my video and subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much.